Okay, y'all. This is going to be a good one right here. Um, these are interviews that I love to do because they're deeper than just music. Um, they're deeper than just what you see in the headlines and what you know the individual for. I'm looking forward to this one. Um, please give my man Atlanta's own Young Dro a warm welcome to Vlad TV. Dro, what up? What up, fool? How you get? I don't know what's going on with you, friends. <laughs> I'm good. I'm good. Good to see you. Yo, you always dapper. You always super fly. No matter when the world sees you, you decked out head to toe, kid. Appreciate that, cousin. <laughs> Absolutely. Okay. Um, I'm going to start this interview different. All right. You have, you know, been in the public eye for the better part of 20 years, at least. Yeah. Um, the world knows you for music. Mm -hmm. you have been very, very outspoken on in, in this new resurgence of yourself yeah. about your past drug use, yeah. um, addiction, mm -hmm. and most importantly, recovery. Right. As you sit here before me, are you high? Are you drunk? Mm -hmm. Or are you under the influence in any way? Um, as I sit here before you, I am 100% clean of everything. I love it. I love it. I love it. How long? Uh, 17 months. I'm working on my two Beautiful. years. <laughs> I love it. Yeah, man. 17 months, 100% sobriety. 100%. Tough, too. Um, I think... Um, it's it's about I think my mindset changed and um it's still a struggle, you know what I'm saying, to actually maintain this, you know, because I do live I still live a uh, hip hop party life. You know, I, I go out at night, I pay my bills and out of clubs and concerts where uh my peers are smoking and drinking and popping champagne and you feel what I'm saying? And that lifestyle is is still there, you know what I'm saying? And uh to navigate through it, I feel like I I feel like this journey, I've been on this journey for five years already. You feel what I'm saying? And it's just because what I see in the night is, you know, it's, it's to fight through that, it's like going through terrain in Africa, you know what I'm saying? In the in the jungle. I do. In the jungle. I do, I do. Okay, we're going to get deeper into this. And it, it, let me start by just saying, I'm so proud of you. Appreciate it, man. I, I, I'm so proud of you as a, as a fellow um, African-American, as a man who grew up in the hood and understands how prevalent and, and uh, accessible drugs and alcohol are. As somebody who has spent the better part of my life, just like you, in hip hop and understand that Sometimes these vices are glorified to be able to do what you're doing yeah. and, and, and be so upfront about it. I applaud you. I salute you. And I am proud of you as a black man. Thank you, brother. OK, what part of Atlanta did you grow up in? Uh, uh, the part of Atlanta that I grew up in or like where I, where I felt like when I was old enough to open my eyes and see. We was on the west side of Atlanta, man. You know what I'm saying? Like, I was born at Grady Hospital. Um, I was raised on, like, a, like the bricks. You know what I'm saying? Like, it was like like the project side. You know what I'm saying? Like, a lot of people see Bankhead, and, and they, they there's some houses um, on Bankhead, too. But we wasn't from, it, we never, it, like, when I say projects, I mean projects. Like, we didn't leave out. The motherfuckers, you feel me? We didn't leave out, you know what I'm saying? So when I say projects, we was just stuck in there. And like these bricks, man, you had, they were selling plates. People was boosting, so you didn't have to leave to go to the mall. All the drugs that you wanted to do was there. The parties was there. You didn't really need to go to the club. So we wouldn't even leave out, you know what I'm saying? And, and plus it was gated. <laughs> 
<laughs> okay. Um, are you from a two family household? No, I'm from a one parent household. I mean, okay, so your father wasn't there. No. Nah. Is is, and before I even get to that, brothers and sisters. Uh, yes, I have. My dad had fifteen kids, but my mom had five of his kids. You know what I'm saying? Hold on, may, may, maybe I didn't catch that. How many kids did your father have? Like fifteen. <laughs> Are you serious? Yeah, but my how, mom. How many but, of them? But my uh, mom I had just... five boys from him. Understood. Yeah. Okay. How many of your father's kids do you actually know? All of them. By name. Yeah, we all got the same last name, too. Uh, are you? Okay, so all of these kids, 15 of y'all, you consider them to be, these are my brothers and sisters. Like, like yes, sir. Straight up and down. <laughs> Beautiful. Yeah. All right. Um, but five boys in your personal household growing up. Yeah, yeah. So I would be raised with five brothers. Um, and it was... It was just, it was tough, you know what I'm saying, to uh, for my mom to be able to do that on her own. And I, I always salute my mama, you know what I'm saying, because she had to play both roles, you know what I'm saying. And my father was a good guy, but, you know, his addiction led him to not be present. You know what I mean? And that's why, that's one of the things that made me, you know, I, I wanted to be different from that. When I saw myself in the grips of it, I was very upset and I fought with that for a long time in my career. You know what I'm saying? Because I was thinking like, you don't end up like your dad. And I'm like, damn sure it is if I don't hurry up. You know what I'm saying? Put grab hold of this. So and I and I and I and I was off and on throughout my career, like, you know, with different things, just trading vices. Okay, you spoke about your dad's addiction. Is there addiction on both sides of your family or just your dad's? Both sides. What are we talking? Drugs, alcohol? Yeah, heroin use, uh, cocaine, crack cocaine, you know, uh, alcohol, weed, you know, cigarettes and shit heavy. I mean, like the usual shit. How serious is it on either side? Are we talking, have you lost family members due to addiction? Yeah, uh, well, on my mom's side, uh, she had seven brothers and sisters. Everybody died except for two. And well, the the two, her and my auntie. And my auntie's a recovering addict. She just didn't pass. But everybody else died except for my mom. Yeah. Are you saying out of seven siblings on your mother's side, five of them have died due to addiction, not... Got shot, not cancer, like literally due addiction. to addiction. Addiction. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Okay. Um, on your father's side, mm -hmm. um, same vices? Well, same vices, but I wouldn't know exactly everybody. You know what I'm saying? Because we was, you know, I think that in our culture, we the mama side is more tangible like you can grab and touch these people you know what i mean so my dad's side we really didn't know but the way he was you know i think my uncle eric i don't know it's a lot of people i know that was getting high and doing some stuff but we really would I, I don't know about it like that but my dad was my dad used for 50 years my dad been using drugs for 50 years he's still here he's about he uh he has cancer right now but he been using dope for like 55 years. I got it got to be. You know what I mean? Damn. Yeah. Okay. Strong, so this strong. is it, this is as much a part of your life as anything else. As hip hop, as I don't know, going to church like this living and being around addiction. You know this. This is long before you ever did anything yourself. This has been a constant in your life. Yeah. Um. What What I wanted to say about about it, like, um. My addiction was when I was. I think I was like twelve, but I thought it was normal to drink and smoke 
and stuff like that. So if sometimes when I would say I was clean in my career, when I did interviews in my past and they was like, you clean? I used to be like, yeah, but I still smoke weed and drunk liquor and pop, you know, and I wouldn't necessarily say pop pills, but I thought it was common to. I thought, it, I thought it was okay. I considered myself clean when I would be full of alcohol or and I smoked weed. You feel me? Like, and that that was a lie. You know what I'm saying? That's that was an addiction within itself because I had been smoking weed since I was like 12. You know what I'm saying? So when people used to ask me, Am I clean or am I, you know, sober? I, I really used to think I was, but I still was doing these things. You know what I'm saying? And like and when I used to do other, like when I partaked in the other drugs, I felt like um, it, it wasn't a big deal because everybody in my family was doing it. You know what I'm saying? And as long as you got you some money and looked good, I thought it was okay. Okay, I love that you um, really, because that's a nuance right there, right? There's a lot of people who feel exactly like you just spoke of. As long as I'm, you know, just smoking a cigarette or I'm just, <laughs> you know, smoking weed yeah. or I take a drink and I'm clean, I'm good. Not realizing that those vices are addictive in and of itself. No, you're not clean. But because you've been surrounded by this your entire life, you looking at it, I ain't on dope. Yeah. I ain't on crack. Yeah. I'm clean. I'm doing so good. So I'm glad <laughs> that you broke that. Yeah, like, like, and, and meant it. Yeah. Wow. 